What's up everyone, my name is Mark Hawk and today I'm excited to be doing a three-way side-by-side -side with the Contour Roam 3 against the Contour Roam 2 against Contour Roam 1. <laughs> Thought I'd never be doing a Contour side-by-side -side again, so let's get out there. Going back to comparing contours, uh, I thought it'd be cool to do some driving comparisons like we used to do back in the day. Now I've put together this whole new roof rig, so maybe we'll start using this a little more in the future. But for now, I kind of wanted to debut it with the uh, Rome comparison, just because it was something we used to do when we used to do uh, Rome side by sides. So we have the, all three Romes uh, sort of cycling here at 1080p, 30 frames a second. And uh, in a moment here, we're going to split them all up and put them side by side. Uh, the only really noteworthy thing about these three cameras, uh, the color profiles are pretty much the same. The Rome 2's image is a little softer. The Rome 3 is pretty sharp but kind of grainy, especially in the sky. And the Rome 1 is kind of somewhere in between those two. And you can see basically the color profile on all three of these is the same. Yeah, they're, they're pretty, pretty much comparable. Everything from the reds to the blues, you can you can pick out that maybe the Rome 2's red has a little more of a warmer hue to it. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's very nitpicky stuff. If we look at these shrubs in the foreground here, especially on the Rome 1 and the Rome 3, they are, uh, they're pretty sharp. With the Rome 2, though, it's kind of soft. Um, Again, the same same goes for the the stuff in the distance, but the Rome 3's sharpness is um, way better. But there's a lot of grain in the sky and stuff like that. And the Rome 2 has a hint of red in its uh, sort of whites, but nothing really to be too discouraged about. So we'll take a look at these again, we'll take a look at the distance and stuff like that. The Rome 2 in this scenario, when the when the sunlight's hitting it, it's definitely giving off this more uh, warmer vibe and stuff like that. It's kind of washing out a little more. But it is a slightly more appealing image to me. The Rome 3 and the Rome 1 kind of have this sort of, um, sort of neutral color palette, and that's fine. This is actually pretty close to what it looked like that day. Adding that warm tint is something that's kind of um, fake that we kind of do to make the image more appealing which could be beneficial to you, or if you're someone that likes to color grade your stuff later, being able to pick your color grade yourself is more important. So we'll zoom in on these two here 100%, and uh, you can see sort of the distant mountains. They're both pretty sharp edges and stuff like that. They're not too far off from one another. The Rome 3 definitely has a significant more amount of detail sort of in that middle mountain area. You can see all the sort of dividing shapes and stuff like that. You can see all the sort of dots for individual trees and stuff like that. A lot of that's lost in the, in the Rome 1. But again, both of these cameras aren't too far from each other, but there is a noticeable quality increase in the Rome 3. Now I'll switch over again to the Rome 2, comparing it against the Rome 3, and again, it's much clearer now to see that sort of warm tint. Uh, again, the greens look much richer and stuff like that. The stuff and the details in the mountain are actually, even though the image is softer on the Rome 2, I feel like I can pick out the trees and the more defining sort of curves in the, in the mountain and stuff like that, but then the edges of the mountain do feel a bit softer. Um, we are seeing a bit of this sort of green dance in the Rome 2. If you look in the upper left, the Rome 3 has a consistent amount of green throughout the image. Uh, I guess actually if you look in the upper left, it's kind of doing the green dance as well. But the things like the foreground shrubs and stuff like that, these, this branch in the, up close to the camera looks pretty sharp, but when we zoom into 200% here, you can kind of see the Rome 3 definitely does still hold an edge over the Rome 2. And then our black levels with the Rome 3 seem much more appropriate. The black levels in the, in, I'm sorry, in the Rome 3, yeah, the black levels look more appropriate, while the Rome 2 definitely has that sort of reddish, sort of muted look to it. There's a lot of locusts up here. Putting all three of these cameras side by side, you can notice there's not a glaring quality increase over them. There's sort of a gradual sort of quality increase, so the Rome 1 to the Rome 2 to the Rome 3. Um, the Rome 2, I don't like their soft edginess and... Kind of with this sort of warm tint, looking at it at this size, not really digging it. But 
uh, one thing, one area where I was kind of surprised, I did this test to kind of test the contrast levels, and I was expecting to see on the Rome 2 to have these sort of dark shadows really crunched out, but overall things aren't getting blown out or crunched down, there's sort of a nice even balance between the two values, and that's really nice to see because generally if you're going through tree lines on like your snowboard during the snow, you know, the, the snow is going to blast out white, but then you're going to get these shadows that are going to cast certain areas dark. And um, what you kind of want to look for is something like this, where this is, again, all three cameras. We want to see something where we're seeing both the shadow areas not being super crunched and the bright areas not being super blown out. And that's kind of good to see that that stayed consistent across uh, all three of these cameras. We'll take a look on how each of these cameras handles stuff, uh, really fine detail up close and up sharp. Now it's really hard to tell with the cameras all bouncing around and stuff like that, but I'm noticing a lot more detail in my sort of uh, 5 o'clock shadow on the Rome 3 compared to uh, the Rome 2 and the Rome 1, especially the Rome 1. The Rome 1 just has this sort of softness to things that are up close to the camera. The Rome 2 and 3 seem to handle uh, up close sharpness a little better, and considering the Rome 2's focus uh, at range kind of seems soft from our previous test, um, it's really nice to see some of that up-close detail sort of uh, maintain itself. Now, what we're kind of showing here is just how these lens flares can be kind of extreme with all three of these cameras. So we have this nice action shot with the guy coming through, we have the dust that kind of blows over, but then we just have this bright glaring sun, uh, sun flare. And right here you can see all three of them. I mean, it doesn't completely wash out the, the plate, it doesn't really change sort of the white balance of the three cameras and stuff like that. You can kind of again see the room 2 there, very warm and rich. Part of this test is going to serve as our sort of minor audio test, so I'm going to keep quiet for the next few minutes, but again, all three of these cameras at this point are filming at 720p, the Rome 2 and the Rome 3 are filming at 60 frames per second, and this is where some of the inconsistencies with filming with the Rome 2 starts to show up, so kind of keep an eye on that, and I'll chime back in in just a few. So maybe this can serve as our talking test as I'm trying to climb the side of this, so I can give you guys a view of this. So maybe this can serve as our talking test as I'm trying to climb the side of this. So I can give you guys a view of this. Pretty good view. And it's not that high from where I originally was, but when you've been sitting behind a desk for the last three months, you've never really gotten to go out and you're asthmatic. Sometimes you can get winded pretty easily. Now you notice real quick with the Rome 1, we always seem to get this sort of ring lens flare on the outer edges of the camera. Uh, the other two cameras don't do this, but it's something I've noticed always with the Rome 1. I kind of think it looks cool, but it definitely is uh, really glaring and kind of takes attention away from stuff. All three of the cameras sort of have a muffled tone to them, just because they are waterproof cameras right out of the box. The Rome 2, however, definitely was a lot less muffled, and maybe I should have took that as a warning sign for stuff that will happen later, but it definitely was a lot louder. And with the Rome 2, we also noticed this sort of darkness that's appearing. Now, this Rome 2 darkness um, basically happened in one of the last updates for the Rome 2, where it couldn't handle going from daylight to nighttime very well. It used to be fairly good. If you look at some of our older tests between the Rome 1 and the Rome 2, um, the Rome 1 and Rome 2 stayed fairly the same, but ever since that, that last update that they put out, uh, you can't really film in the evening, because I really feel like the results we're seeing here are fairly unacceptable with the Rome 2, while the Rome 3 is basically performing like the Rome 2 before that firmware. Uh, things used to look like this, they used to be much more on par with the Rome 1, and it's going to be kind of a constant problem from this point on for the Rome 2. And you can see in areas like this where we basically don't have any light casting on any of the foreground objects. Everything gets kind of silhouetted. This is not far off from what it looked like. I just kind of wanted to see what the skyline would look like. And you'll notice that since we are sort of kind of crunching down the, uh, the white values on the Rome 2, we get a lot more gradients of color in the Rome 2. Uh, things on the Rome 3 are kind of getting blown out a little bit. And the Rome 1 kind of is... Um, on par with the Rome 2 in this case, but again, it's kind of a it's kind of a preference here. But I do feel the Rome 2 in low light conditions, if you got that late update, is kind of a useless camera in low light, and there's no way to fix that. 
We'll do a few tests here running at 1080p 30 frames per second across all cameras. Now the reason before we didn't switch the frame rates on the Rome 1 and the Rome 2 and the Rome 3 is because changing settings on the Rome 1 and the Rome 2 without a PC handy is near impossible. Actually it is impossible. You need to hook it up to Storyteller software in order to change any settings on those cameras. With the Hero 3 however you get a little switch that you can flip between two preset modes and for me I have one that's 1080p 30 frames a second and one that's 720p 60 frames per second and since the Rome 3 is the only one that has a dedicated photo button, I also can rely on that as sort of a third toggle mode. You can see here when we're handling these sort of actual nighttime conditions and we're driving down this fairly lit road, the Rome 3 is handling fantastic. Um, I think the Rome 2, when you're looking at it at, these, at like a small thumbnail here, it has really nice rich blacks, the same with the Rome 1, and maybe the Rome 3 just kind of feels a little too bright and maybe it feels a little too warm, but when we blow those images up to 100%, uh, I feel the Rome 3 is a much more appealing image and there's a lot more information there, there's a lot more detail that we capture at night. The Rome 2 we're losing so much and with the Rome 1, you know, it is a three or four year old camera. It's got kind of a blue tint to it which is again a, a personal preference on whether or not you mind that or not. And we switch back to 720p real quick and again the Rome 2 and the Rome 3 are at 60 frames a second. But I wanted to show you that the Rome 3 has this sort of red tint that sometimes appears at night at 720p. And I don't think it's the light coming off the Rome 2 because all three of these cameras are sitting side by side. But for some reason I kept getting this sort of red banding on the left side of our Rome 3. It only happened at night, only happened at 720p. Uh, definitely did not see it at 1080p 30 frames a second like we just did. But it's something that's there, and if you do film a lot in 60 frames per second, it's something to watch out for. Again, we'll switch over to uh, 1080p 30 frames a second here. You're not seeing that red banding and stuff like that, and I only had it on that one day with that one test at 720p, but it was something that was repeatedly showing up in multiple clips and multiple locations. And you can see again here at night, if we're looking at the texture of this wall, the Rome 3 and the uh, Rome 1 have a lot of texture detail. It's very sharp and crisp. The Rome 2 is a little soft. Again, you can kind of see it's a little darker and stuff like that. As we move to cover uh, these three cameras underwater, you might be thinking, I forgot to include the Rome 2 footage. However, doing our underwater test, my Rome 2, you know how we were having that less muffled audio sound before? Maybe my camera was less than muffled as it should be, uh, less than, you know, water protected as it should be, because as soon as we take it underwater, this camera just flooded completely. And you can actually hear it um, when we go underwater here, you'll hear a weird booping noise. That's uh, the Rome 2 filling up with water and just shooting a bunch of air bubbles. So for the rest of this, we're gonna do uh, the Rome 1 and the Rome 3 at 1080p, 30 frames a second. Honestly, both of these cameras, if I was looking at them, I'd say the Rome 3 definitely holds a bit of sharpness, but they're very hard to tell apart. Um, especially if you watch me here, I do a very graceful uh, sort of manatee flop. Um, there's a good amount of crispness and, and detail on my hair detail and stuff like that. But overall, I find the clarity on both of these cameras to be uh, pretty acceptable, but there is a noticeable sort of bump in the Rome 3's quality over the Rome 1. We'll take one final look at these guys side by side. Anyway, if you're still on the hunt for the perfect action camera for you, we have a ton more coverage you can check out. We have Sony's new action cameras, including the AZ-1 and the AS-100, and we'll put those up against all of the new GoPro Hero 4s from this year, including the GoPro Hero Basic model. And that doesn't mean we're not, we're leaving out the GoPro Hero 3s of the past. We also have a bunch of videos comparing all of those cameras you can check out. If you guys are looking for accessory ideas or maybe mounts that you might not have heard of, check out our gear and accessory playlist. And if I've been super helpful to you, consider leaving a like or subscribe. Uh, we also have a Patreon page up if you guys are feeling super giving. All of Mark Hall Cam is pretty much run out of my pocket, so any donations you can give keeps me buying more action cameras and just helps me keep the lights on. Anyway guys, thanks for the support, have a good holiday season, and I'll see you guys out there.